And DW's Michael Orti is with me now at the table to talk more about that legacy. But Michael, let's perhaps begin with the trial. What are our expectations going in here? What are the main questions that we have that we hope will be answered by the end of it? Yeah, so um, 34 years um, to this week, um, Thomas Sankara was assassinated, um, paving the way for his colleague and comrade in arms, Bless Kompari, to come to power. Now, in a 2007 interview, Kompari said that he overthrew Sankara because Sankara jeopardized relations between France and Ivory Coast. But what was not clear in that interview is who killed Sankara? And that's what this trial will seek to answer. Um, and also, this has been um, a trauma on the collective consciousness of the Burkinabi people for the last 34 years. And so many people are hoping that this trial is going to bring some sort of finality to this, this mystery surrounding the death of Thomas Sankara. Many people also believe that this couldn't have happened without the direct support of France and American intelligence. So many people in, in Burkina Faso, I should say, right. would be hoping to find answers um, regarding what role France and, and America played um, in this unfortunate incident. Michael, we're talking about a man um, who was and is still revered by, by many people all over Africa today, Thomas Sankara. What was it about him that people loved and still love so much? I mean, first off, he played a guitar. I guess that makes him very charming for many people. Um, he was a young man, very charismatic, and uh, quite populist. Uh, he was modest. Um, he decided to sell off the government fleet of Mercedes and stick with a very cheap vehicle. He slashed his own salary and also compelled his uh, appointees to slash their salaries. He composed the national anthem of Burkina Faso. He changed the name of the country to Burkina Faso. So everywhere you looked, there was a bit of Sankara affecting the lives of people, and people loved him for it. He improved agriculture. He planted trees to address desertification. So there were so many things that he did. He banned FGM. He banned polygamy. He banned early marriage. So all of these things were right. policies that endeared him to, um, to many of the people in Burkina Faso. And beyond that, he also represented the, the kind of leadership that we are missing at the moment in Africa. Um, he was a leader who was down to earth, who was selfless, who put his people first. During his four short time, many people had access to education, something that they didn't have previously. And so these are the things that made him important then and still make him popular today. Well, just, just stand by, Michael, because for many people, as you are just saying, the slain left-wing leader is an inspirational figure. And so DW News Africa asked some people on the streets of Accra, what does he mean to them? Take a listen. He stands for selflessness. Somebody, of course, who came to power through the barrel of the gun, but decided to slash his own salary and then urge citizens to follow suit. That's selfless leadership. And that's what Africa lacks now. I mean, if you look at his life, and you, you can see that he, he meant well for the people of Burkina Faso. I mean, when you look at even the vehicle he used, he, he didn't use, he wasn't very, you know, uh, opulent in his, in his lifestyle. And he was very down to earth. He cared about people. He was much more about the well-being and then the livelihood of the, uh, the betterment of the, Burkina Faso, uh, the people of Burkina Faso. He represents a sort of revolutionary verve that gave birth to um, um, a, a certain level of hope for the people of Africa that, as Kwame Nkrumah said, indeed the black man was capable of managing his own affairs. Mm. So personally, he stands for the kind of leadership that Africa yearns for now. If, like Nkrumah, many people say he was ahead of his time. Yes, of course, Thomas Sankara was equally ahead of his time because of what he stood for, the vision, the selflessness, that we are not seeing our contemporary leadership. So we've heard the praise, Michael, but what do Thomas Sankara's critics say about him? Um, he was a complicated um, character, uh, Christine. Um, one of the things that he did was to increase agricultural production, and that meant that he clashed with the political elite in Burkina Faso. And in that, he created enemies within the political elite. And many of them were victims of what they called the military tribunals at the time. Uh, many of them say that the processes in the military tribunals were not free and fair. Um, again, 
being a military ruler, uh, democracy, there wasn't multi-party democracy at the time in Burkina Faso. So it was a government by Sankara, run by Sankara and his cronies. All right. DW's Michael Oti, thank you for your insights on that.